Hollywood, California. Okay, hold on. It's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. I'm not smoking pot. I'm not drinking. And this is ridiculous. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here is an email for a listener named Gino. Gina writes in and says, I have a friend, yeah, right, who just started going out with this girl. You notice, by the way, one thing the Internet has done now, people have just decided to write the way they they send IMs, going, G-O-I-N, going. I have a friend who just started going out with this girl, not even an apostrophe with going, just going. I have a friend who just started going out with this girl. We're spelled W E R E without the apostrophe. We're all <laughs> we're all mutual friends, and I'll I don't think he meant ill. Admit they're T H E I R a great couple. Period. But the other night, he pulled me aside and told me. He is going to propose. I told him everything bad he's getting into that I've learned from you. We are only 23 years old. At the same time, he told me about what he's going to do. No period. He also asked me to be one of his groomsmen. I know it's it's ITS. I know it's his, no apostrophe. I know it's his choice, ultimately. Maybe the apostrophe key on his keyboard doesn't work. I know it's his choice, ultimately, but I just really think it's no apostrophe. Terrible idea. Not it's a terrible idea. It's terrible idea. And I almost want to decline his invitation as a groomsman. What do I do, Tom? Well, rather than uh, turning this into a, a conversation about what this particular guy ought to do, let's broaden that out a bit. Because I know that some of you have gotten into these situations. Let me give you some examples. This is one. Okay, someone you know is getting married, and for whatever reason you object to the marriage, here are some of the reasons you might object. The guy's too young. He's marrying a bitch, somebody you don't approve of. He's marrying somebody who doesn't approve of you. You know he's making a mistake of some kind for whatever reason. It's just your opinion. I mean, you know, time will tell if he's made a mistake. It's just your opinion, okay? But that's your opinion. You think this guy shouldn't be getting married. I mean, forget about whether you decline the offer to be a groomsman. Do you go to the wedding? Do you go? Do you refuse to go? And what are the consequences of that for you? But that's not the only thing. Let's try another one. You have a friend who's going to have a baby. And you don't think they ought to be having a baby. You think they're too young and immature. You think they're eventually going to break up. You think having babies isn't cool. Whatever the reason, you are anti your friend having a baby. And they say, come to the christening. Or if you're a chick, they say, come to the baby shower. Ever refuse to go? When you refuse to go, how do you refuse? 
do you say, he? I'm not coming because I'm opposed. Or do you puss out and just say nothing and not show up? See, I think most people puss out. On the one hand, they are offended by the idea the person will get married or have a baby or do whatever it is they're opposed to. But most people will never actually give you the chapter and verse of why they do that. They just simply don't show. Then hurting the feelings of the people for whom you don't show. Then down the line, the person for whom you didn't show, now that person has to decide how they feel about this. Are they angry at you? Many times they get angry at you. Do they talk to you again in the future? Well, maybe time heals all wounds. They get around to it eventually. I had a situation. I'm going to tell you about a situation I had. This is a real situation. Okay? Somebody I know. By the way, it's also somebody that Gary knows. It's somebody that uh, Dino knows. I don't think Art knows him. Somebody we know, who used to like to hoard around quite a bit, finally decided to get married to a bitch. Somebody who, when we saw her in person, we all... I know he's not listening and she's not either, so I can say it. And besides, he wouldn't know we were talking about him because he doesn't think she's a bitch. Okay. Anyway, when we would see her, we would go, oh, my God, I can't believe he's marrying that. I can't believe it. She's going to wear the pants of the family. I can't believe it. I can't believe he's marrying her. Oh, my God. So, you know, this guy was a friend. And I got to tell you that y you ever know somebody that you think she's a bitch? Maybe everybody thinks she's a bitch. And so she, even though you've never said it, she's not stupid. She's just a bitch. She can kind of sense that nobody likes her. So it's one thing to think she's a bitch and that he shouldn't get married to her. But here's what happened with me and an ex-girlfriend of mine, okay? This is a true story. And I think it's ruined my relationship with this friend of mine forever, okay? Here's the true story. So this guy gets married to the bitch, and... Well, you know, put it this way. He's going to get married to the bitch. Let's go back in time. He's about to get married. And I'm talking to another mutual friend. And he said, you, you with me on this so far? Okay. Somebody we all know. The guy was whoring around with everybody in, in creation, and then suddenly he decides to get married to an ex-girlfriend, all right? who we all think is a bitch. So he's about to get married, and um, I I haven't heard about a wedding or anything like that. I know nothing about it. So I talked to another mutual friend, and the guy says to me, are you going to be at so-and-so's wedding? I already RSVP'd. Are you going? Well, guess what? I wasn't invited. I was, This guy was a friend of mine for years, and I wasn't invited. Now, I never said a bad word to this one. I never, never. Right? I met her. I was always nice. I was always sweet as pie when I saw her around. Somehow I think she thinks I was a bad influence on him. And who knows what he said to her. Oh, you know, I'm not like that, but I was hanging out with the guys, and this is what we do. You know how guys do that, right? They're too much of a pussy to say, hey, that's who I was then, and oh, I'm getting married now. Don't complain about what I did in the past. So I, I don't know what he said to her about me. But for whatever reason, she clearly wore the pants in that uh, upcoming burgeoning family. And you know who decides who gets the wedding invitations. I didn't get one. And I found out from a mutual friend. So, number one, I thought he shouldn't be getting married to her. Number two, how dare he not invite me to his wedding? I found out about it from somebody else. So, um, one day I am with my girlfriend, and somehow said friend is talking to me on the phone, doesn't mention the fact that he's got a wedding coming up, doesn't mention the fact the invitations have gone out, nothing. Here's what happens. We go up to friend's apartment, and there is fiancé and friend in the apartment, and we're, we're in the apartment having dinner with them, drinking, hanging out. Well... <laughs> 
It is now just a couple of weeks before the wedding, and they are talking to us about the, the, the preparations they're making. They're getting, they have the place rented and what kind of wedding cake they're going to have and who's coming and all. And, and we're like sitting there having dinner with these people going, you know, do whatever you want, but I'm thinking, why are you telling us this? Why are you telling us this story? Anyway, we spent an evening and this bitch decides that she likes me and the girlfriend. After spending an evening at their apartment, eating Chinese food and having a conversation, apparently she, I get a call later on from my buddy and he says to me, here's what he says to me. This is great. He says to me, I was uh, talking to my uh, my uh, fiance here, and uh, we realized that uh, you guys didn't get an invitation to our wedding, so we're sending you one right now. Now, I, at this point, am willing to let bygones be bygones. Frankly, I don't even like going to weddings. And yes, I thought she was a bitch. I didn't think we should marry her, even though we spent an evening charming the pants off her, and she just thought we were just fantastic. So now the, the wedding invitation arrives about 10 days before the wedding. And, like, you know, like, here I am ready to go, well, all right, what am I going to do? You know, the guy invited me, and he's a friend of mine, and I'm not a big fan of weddings, but okay. And here's what girlfriend says. Girlfriend says, absolutely, this is my girlfriend, absolutely not. How dare they invite us 10 days before the wedding? So, yeah, but this guy's my friend. How am I going to... I don't care what you tell him. This is 10 days before the wedding. I'm supposed to get something to wear. I'm supposed to get a gift. It's 10 days before the wedding. Why Why are we second-class citizens? Why is it that we got invited 10 days before the wedding? I said, what am I supposed to... I don't care what you tell him. What? Why should we... we if they sent us an invitation in the first place, we would definitely go. But getting an invitation, did, well, when we went to the house and she decided, I don't care. So now what did I do? <laughs> what am I going to do? Do I want to drag this out? Do I want to call this guy on the phone? Now I'm like perplexed. I, I, um, I'm i supposed to call him up on the phone here. I'm supposed to call him up and say, uh, yeah, I uh, got your invitation. Thanks so much, but... Uh... Uh, well, well, we can't go because uh, my girlfriend thinks you waited too long to send us an invitation. I couldn't do that. So I debated it and debated it and debated it. I don't want to look like a pussy. What did I do? Here's what I did. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I did absolutely nothing. I'm telling myself, I'm saying to myself, well, the invitation could have got lost in the mail. Maybe I never got it. If it ever comes up, I'll just say I never got the invitation. And uh, sure enough, they got married. And I never heard from them again. <laughs> ever. Ever. Have not heard from him since. Now, he never told me why I haven't heard from him. But this is somebody I knew for years. And suddenly, no, I guarantee you. That Miss Bitch, or should I say Mrs. Bitch now, Mrs. Bitch is there going, who needs him? We invited him to the wedding and he didn't even, didn't even RSVP. I can just hear the other end of the conversation. And this, these things cause so much hurt between people. But that's what happens. And that, that's why I'm asking you about this, okay? Somebody's getting married and you don't approve. For whatever reason. Or somebody's having a baby, and you don't approve. You're not a baby person. You don't like going to baby showers. You don't like the idea that your friend is going to be tied with a rope around his neck. Uh, whatever. All right? So the question becomes, should you, should you stand up for what you believe in? Have you ever done this? Have you stood up and said, you know what? I'm not going to that baby shower. I am not going to that wedding. Not doing it. Not doing it because I don't approve. I think it's wrong. I think he's, I think he's gonna end it badly, and I don't want to be a part of that. Any part of this, I don't be in the. I don't be carrying a ring. I don't want to be standing there at the altar. I don't want to be in the, the synagogue. I don't want to be there. 
Have you ever taken a stand like this? Did you tell the other person why you weren't coming? And what were the consequences? 1-800-5-800-TOWN. Like us. Like us. 1-800-5-800-866. Tom. 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 You're the new Bible, the new testament, if anything. Everything you say is just... Perfect. Like, there's no, there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. The Tom Likey Show. Right. Oh, yeah. It's the Tom Likey Show. Thank you for tuning in. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. And we are talking about those of you who uh, know somebody got married or had a baby, whatever. You objected. Rather than going. Where they said, speak now or forever hold your peace. You just held your tongue. You didn't go to the wedding. <laughs> or you didn't go to the baby shower or the christening or whatever. Because you thought it was wrong. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. This is Mark. First time, long time. Uh, I got a buddy named Johnny. He is going to marry this hag. And uh, I didn't see think it was a good thing. I couldn't stand by him. I dissed the wedding. I didn't show up. Uh, he kind of held it against me for a little while, but he ended up uh, getting divorced about a year later when she had an affair with her boss, and then he ended up getting shot, and they think it yeah. might have been... So you were right. Getting married was the wrong thing to do. Oh, geez. In that case, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so uh, was he upset at you for refusing to go to the wedding? You know, I think he was. I didn't talk to him for quite a while, but uh, all of a sudden, next thing you know, there he is, and he's got a new lady, and the other one's gone. And one day, someone unloaded a forty-five through his window of his bedroom and uh, tried taking him out. He got one in the leg, but he lived, and it was quite a spectacle. We all know she had something to do with it. Wow, wow, wow. Well, that'll teach him. That'll teach them. They never found out who did it either. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who the suspect is? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, Tom, you're doing a great job, bud. Keep the youngins, keep the youngins listening. I'll do the best I can, Mark. Awesome. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going great. Right on. Yeah, man, um... Yeah, this person happened to be my mom's wedding I didn't go to. You didn't go to your mom's wedding? Hell no. <laughs> Who did your mom marry? Uh, she married some truck driver from Minnesota. Boy. Yeah, yeah she uh, she did what a lot of people couldn't do. Like, she on her own, she ended up buying a house here in La Habra, California, you know. And uh, she, you know, is, is pretty commendable, you know what I mean? Like, you know, hey, you know, you did it on her own at school. Well, she met this guy and online, and she I guess he convinced her uh, to uh, sell her house. Wait a minute. Your mom your mom lived in La Habra Heights, and she was online, and she met a truck driver from Minnesota. Yeah, I know. It's, not, it's just like some National Lampoon's type deal, but yeah. And so, wait a minute. Did they, like, hook up somewhere? Where did they meet? Uh, I ended up, check it out, We the first time I met this guy... I mean, nothing against mullets or nothing, you know. But uh, I met him at the Black Angus, right? The I met Black this Angus, guy. that's good eating for a truck driver. Yeah, yeah, but check it out. Uh, I didn't even know who I'm looking for, so me and my wife walk in, and uh, this guy opens the door for us. By the way, why don't you ever see a black guy named Angus? I don't know. <laughs> Just curious. I'm sure you probably find one. You in know, African Americans are very creative with the names, but I've never met a black man named Angus. No, no, not yet. Because you could call him Black Angus, of course. Yeah, word. <laughs> All right, so, Anyways, so, so, yeah, so, so wait a minute. So you met him, <laughs> you met the truck driver at Black Angus. I think you were going to tell me you had to take your mom to a rest area. No, no, no. Actually, he, like, the guy opens the door. I'm on the I, northbound I was... 5 freeway in Kern County. You look for the first rest area. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, is, uh, this guy opens the door, and I thought he was part of the... Uh, like, they, you know, he had, like, a, a rubber vest on. It was, like, a cheap leather vest, real tight, black. And uh, and he had, like, some cowboy boots on. And uh, and I think he had a 10-gallon hat or something. That's great. 
And I was, uh, I, I couldn't believe this. Uh, it looks like he te- brushed his teeth with butter. I mean, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean, my mom is Puerto Rican, right? So I'm thinking, I mean, you know. So for your on, mom, like, for your mom, this is really exotic. Yeah, she, so I was like, what the hell? Now she's got NASCAR stickers on her car, and I don't know, man. But um, There's not yeah, a lot of Puerto Ricans I know of who are into NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, she she tells me it's great out there. She goes ice fishing. I told her you're the you're probably the one spick in the world that goes ice fishing. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> you know, I said she's probably the one spick. In the I world heard that goes what ice you fishing. said. I heard what you said. <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't really understand. Don't what blame ice me was. for saying that. Oh, holy cow! I, she told me she sits on a lake and drills a hole in the ice and waits for fish to jump on the stick. I'm like. I don't know. I, I I just go to Albertsons for fish. But anyways, um, <laughs> I know. I thought her husband was drilling the hole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, from what I hear, they have not in the consummated. Ice. Oh, they have not consummated their relationship. No, no. I think uh, I don't know what the deal is, and, and I don't really want to get into that because it's kind of wow. a disgusting thought. But uh, yeah. So, um, anyways, she tells me about you know as far as the wedding. Uh, my dad still has unconditional love for her. Like, I would talk bad about her, and still, even though they've been divorced some 20 years, he says, you'd ever talk bad about your mom. This your and that. dad has unconditional love for your mom, who's in love with a truck driver from yeah. Minnesota, with whom she has not consummated the relationship. Like, oh well, no, he's moved on, but he still doesn't ever want me to disrespect her, and, and if she ever needs help, he helps her out. I see. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's traditional like that. He's from the old school, like, but he takes <laughs> care of her. But... You know, um, he takes care of your mom while she's going to the Black Angus with a truck driver. Yeah, well, yeah. he 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 just he. I guess he feels guilty about stuff in the past. But um, anyway, so she tells me to uh, she uh, she calls me up and says, "I want to know if you're going to go to the wedding. Uh, this is the deal, and uh, you have you can invite uh, yeah if you and your wife are going to go." And and I said, "Yeah, but my pops is in town. He wants to know if he can go." Now, where, know, where is this? Where is this being held? The Waffle House this wedding? Where is it going to be held? Actually, actually, no. This was at the Queen. She's got, um, her, she's got a friend that's dying. This nice lady, and she, this lady tells me your mother likes to ish above her a hole. Basically, she has champagne taste of beer money. I see. Okay. So, 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 so where uh, they get? Where are they getting married? Well, they were getting get married at the at the Queen Mary. Uh, it's kind of like the Waffle House. <laughs> well, Queen Mary's nice. Come on, but uh, sure uh, it is. But, <laughs> but uh, but so um, she asked me. She told me. I said, "Well, my dad liked to go," and she says, uh, "Who's, oh, who's doing? Who's go. doing the catering? Black Angus?" <laughs> no, I, I I don't know. Well, that's the thing. I, when she told me my pops couldn't go, I said, "You know what? Uh, I'm not interested. I'll go to the next one." So, what did that do to your relationship with your mom? Uh, well, they're, uh, they're kind of divorced right now or separated. So, uh, when she, she's one of those people that when she's, uh, when she doesn't have a man in her life, she, uh, all of a sudden her friends are real close and she's buddy, buddy. And well, that's how most, that's how most chicks are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they yeah, stop that's... calling you when they're getting the pipe laid real good, you know, and then, uh, when that stops, yeah, exactly, they need exactly. something to fill the time. Now all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. So I mean, basically, you know, her her family back east, you know, all her uh, relatives were opposed to it. I was opposed to it, and I think I'm the only person who was opposed to it that didn't go. Really? But yeah, I told her. I said I'll go to your next one. Hey, like, hey, okay. zero tolerance, zero tolerance. Yeah. Oh boy. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. By the way, how popular is the zero tolerance policy? When I took Labor Day off and we ran reruns on Labor Day, and apparently we ran a number of episodes, people calling in and cursing uh, constantly. People wrote in and said, what happened to the zero tolerance policy? (laughs) These were reruns. It hadn't been implemented yet, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, oh, look at this, Armando. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. Son, how are you? All right. Pretty good. I got a story uh, eight years ago. My childhood um, friend, my best friend, he got involved with um, my other friend's girl. She was 19 at the time. We were like 25. 
You guys are almost done a fist fight for this chick, and um, I'm like, what are you guys doing? Well, just to make the long story short, this guy gets this girl pregnant, my childhood friend, and I didn't talk to him for a while, so he comes to my house on a Friday, gives me the invitation, and the wedding is that, that Saturday. So I told him I wasn't going, that if it wasn't going to work out, she's 19, she's going to cheat on you. And eight months later, I found out she cheated on him, and he got divorced, and he's doing child support payments. Of course. And I haven't talked to him since, and wherever he's at, Mario, throw some nuts. You know where I live. Grow some nuts, Mario. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Tom. Send me out Kobe style, please. All right, Armando. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. With your beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number at half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. We're talking about people who refuse to go to the wedding of a friend because they don't think the guy's marrying the right person, or maybe you've refused to go to a christening or a baby shower of somebody who had a baby. Maybe you think they shouldn't be having a baby. Maybe you think they shouldn't be having a baby with a psychotic nut job or whatever. So you just uh, you vote with your feet and you refuse to go. If you've done this, and what happened? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Melissa, on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? I'm doing great. Wonderful. You know what? Um, I never called in, and I heard this question. I said, you know what? Five years ago, I refused to be my friend's wedding, and I was one of the bridesmaids. I found out she was cheating on him before even tying the knot. And I confronted her and said, I refused to stand at the altar, see you walk down in your beautiful white dress, you know, that you're already cheating on this wonderful guy. And um, after I confronted her with that, every single bridesmaid followed mine, uh, my route, and she actually called off the wedding. Really? Did she tell the, uh, the uh, fiancé why she was calling it off? You know it. Um, we basically cornered her and told her she cannot continue to lie to him. She had a child with him. She was with him for 10 years. And he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And I did not want to see him getting taken advantage of. Even well, if it was see, again, though, you are reiterating what I'm always telling the guys. When you're a wonderful, wonderful guy, this is what happens to you. You get screwed. You know it. And I'm so happy. I'm friends with him to this day after six years that that took place. And he's a, still a wonderful guy. And he deserves the best. Did you give him some mercy sex after that just to make her pissed off? Or did you? Oh, you're dirty. Dirty. Come on. That's hot. <laughs> no. Could have, huh? Could have. You know, you could have jumped in there and shown him uh, how compassionate you can really be. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I'm a wonderful girl, so I decided not to. But, oh. You know, hey, I saved a divorce. That's all I can say. And saved him some money because he was a wealthy guy and... He would have had to pay a lot of alimony. I wonder how much child support he's paying. I, you know what? Um, that's a whole other story. I don't even want to get into. But oh boy, do you still talk to her? Not at all. We actually our friendship ended, and um, we're no longer friends. Um, and you know what? That's what I was willing to sacrifice to tell the truth. I was not going to support a, a marriage that was already being unfaithful. You got to wonder why she told you she was being unfaithful. Like you were supposed to be proud of her or happy about that? I don't get it. You know, she just said that we were just going to back her up, support her, and no big deal. Put on our beautiful, you know, bridesmaid dresses and have a big ball party, get wasted, and, you know. And she'll divorce him six months later, and that's not how it works. That's not how it's supposed to work, but frequently that is how it works. Tom, 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 like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. Back in high school, you been having a girlfriend. First day I heard you, dump the bitch the next day. I love that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 
Gala to you from Hollywood, California, IA. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, have you ever refused to go to the wedding of a friend because you thought they shouldn't be getting married or they were too young to get married or they were marrying the wrong person? Have you ever refused to attend a baby christening or a shower because a friend uh, was having a baby with a psychotic bitch or because uh, you didn't think they should be having a kid or whatever reason? 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, you know what? I have a cousin um, that uh, he chose to go um, outside of... I guess you could say the color boundaries or the racial boundaries. Of, Which boundaries are those? <laughs> well, the boundaries that our family's kind of uh, we we're brought up to believe in. So your family, um, your family is racist, and uh, uh, one relative uh, decided to go against the family racism. Well, I, I guess you could say it was more of a not like there was something wrong with the people. But it was just that when we were brought up, we were told that. Uh, if you go outside of a race in a relationship, that relationships are hard enough as it is if you get into them. And we're pretty much discouraged from getting into relationships. Kind of everybody kind of followed what is. But, but it is it is racism. Oh yeah, I know it's racism, and I totally agree with you. I'm not denying that it is. Right. But uh, you know, is brainwashing uh, brainwashed into my head, and I choose to remain. I was this a remain. by the way? Was this a religious objection in some way? I'm sorry? Was this a religious objection in some way? Um, no, I'm not a religious I'm not a religious so your person. Parents, so your parents are just racist? Um, yeah, my it's mainly my mother's side. My mother is from Texas, at Corpus Christi, and her father's a total redneck, which I'm not, you know, my grandfather, which I'm not proud to say, because the rest, my other half of my family is actually, you know, all doctors and lawyers and everything. And they're from Canada, so, you know... That's not exactly anything to brag about either, but uh, it was just uh, when it came to be the point of uh, this girl that he, my cousin, started dating was uh, she was African American, and um, the family was just something else. I mean, like three of the girls' brothers, uh, two of them were in jail. One of them uh, was on his way to prison. Um, you know, I mean, it was just a wreck. And everybody and their, everybody was advising him, you know, not to go forth with this and whatnot. And he ended up getting, mar you know, married to her anyway. And he asked me to go to the wedding, and I just refused to. Why did you refuse to go? Um, no, the number one issue of the the whole thing was, I said, you know, you're getting into hell. I think you're. Too, he was only 23, so I said personally, I think you're too young to get married, you know. And you're stepping into hell because I said, you know, this girl's brothers. Um, every single time you have an argument with her, a problem with her. You know, these guys are all jailbirds and prisoners, and they're going to come threaten you with their, you know, your gangster friend buddies and whatnot. And I said, you know, relationships are terrible and hard enough as it is. Uh, you know, why don't you just stay single till you're older and, you know, go to school or do something. You know, work, but don't. Well, you know? uh, now it says here on the screen you told Dean it had to do with the fact that he, he was marrying a black person. Well, you wanted to, you wanted to know my, my namely, namely my, my name number one reasoning was that, you know, I mean, I wouldn't suspect that if the girl was a normal, if the guy, if, you know, if the girl was coming from a middle class white family that, you know, didn't have a bunch of buffoon brothers that were in jail, that were all gangsters, that they're going to have them coming after, giving them problems if they ever have an argument in their marriage or whatnot. And, you know, the rest of the family was not too bright as it was. So. Wow. Yeah. Of course, uh, your family, with all the racism and everything, how bright are they? It's a, it's, it's, it is ignorance. And I'll argue Sounds like that. a marriage made in heaven. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to go. So I'm, I'm just going to keep uh, trying to grow and listen to your show and uh, try to stick to your rules, which I've done so far. Well, good luck on that, Robert. Thank you for that. Uh, Vicky on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Hi. My problem is... Um, this is it for me. People need to, first of all, mind their own business. If you don't like what's going on, stay out of it. That's the best way to handle anything. People are way too involved in their friends' affairs. You're a friend. You're not an acquaintance. A friend normally accepts the person for whatever they do. That's another point. Another point. Again, I don't, I don't, don't agree like with that. If a friend does something really offensive 
uh, you're, you're not behind them. I mean, uh, I gotta tell you something. If a friend of mine like, was that last guy who called in and he said, well, I'm not coming to the wedding because you're marrying somebody who's another race. I don't care if he's a friend or not. I'm not going to be supportive of that. And you don't have to be, but that's your opinion. Keep it to yourself. Don't go. Don't go because a lot of times, too, this is the problem. A lot of people's stuff is more messed up, so they're so opinionated that they want to share their point. Don't like it, don't go. You tell your friend if that's really what that person is one time. I don't think, I don't. it's not a good idea, woo, 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 but you don't push your values off on somebody else. And if you choose, don't go. That's that's this is America. You don't like something, don't go. But if a friend is a friend is a friend, you just don't deal with that situation. You don't cut them off. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing. If you don't go to the wedding, let's say you don't go to somebody's wedding. Like, like I, I did not go to somebody's wedding. Okay. Did, did not go. Because my girlfriend at the time was offended at getting an invitation 10 days before the wedding. Yet she would not call them up and express her opinion about it. She would not call them and say, hey, we're not coming. Here's why. She let me do the dirty work. She laid hey, that in my that. lap. <laughs> so I, I, we didn't go to the wedding. Okay. And uh, my attitude about it was if he calls me, nothing will change. He hasn't called me since. And, see, and now that's his problem. That's not your problem. You did what you felt. You didn't say, we're not going this and that. It, it, it's no longer your problem. It's your friend's problem. He's the one that had an issue with it. It's not your problem. You just lost the I don't even know that that's the reason he hasn't called. I can only assume because the guy didn't even call me to say, hey, not cool what you did. Not RSVPing. So therefore, don't call me anymore. He just said nothing. See, and that's not a friend because a friend would have said, hey, that's not cool. So evidently, you guys weren't friends. You thought you were friends. He was. He felt more of a acquaintance. Uh, I I just think we were friends until he married that uh, pussy whipping wife of his. Well, that's good. Well, when did because because she was clearly she was. You know what she was like. When I was a kid, I had a friend. I'm not going to say his name because I just saw him recently. But when I was a kid, I had a friend who got married pretty young, and I called his house to talk to him, and I got. What it turned out to be his wife on the phone. So this woman answers the phone. I said, "Hi, can I speak to so and so?" And she says, "What is this in reference to?" Oh, see that? No, that's a problem. That's right. a problem. But see, that was something for him to handle. But see, when you're getting it whipped on you so good, sometimes men can't differentiate a good friend and a wife. You got to put both of them in their place, and he couldn't do it. Um, that's uh, see. There's all kinds of issues going on here, but Vicky, good call. Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's the telephone number. Here's Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing today? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm not from New York, by the way. I hate New York. I understand. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, listen, there's another thing that me and you have in common, and that's uh, hating people that you're friends with and get married. And, well, not necessarily hating them because of this, but, you know, I think it makes them look like they're two-faced, you know? They're your friends one time, and then all of a sudden something happens, and they meet a girl, and now they don't want to be your friends anymore. Or the girl forces him not to be friends with you. Yeah, well, you know what? I, that that really pisses me off, and you know, it's it's the most insidious form of being pussy whipped, you know. Oh, by far to the what tenth power. Yeah, I mean, it's the worst. Let me you tell know, you, the guys who story. give up their friends, you know. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, it's funny that you bring up this topic because uh, I have actually a few friends that because I used to promote clubs. I would say about two months ago, three months ago. And I used to go out, you know, to clubs, and my job was to bring girls and guys down to the club. Well, you know, there's no problem me getting girls down there. You know, guys getting down there, hey, it was no problem either. But I would get my friends down there, hey, come and hang out, meet girls. But make sure, you know, if you get the number, hey, hook up, but don't stick with them because the girls that go to the club, you know, most of the time they just, they, they, they hoe around, you know, they just go up in there to to see what, what type of attention they can get. And and that's basically it. So I told them, just, you know, don't get any feelings. Don't start calling them all the time. Just hook up, and that's it. Well, one of my friends, uh, 
It was um, I'm about to tell you about my my boy Efren because his wedding's coming up. Um, he we met like in college a while back, but you know we had a lot of things in common. We started hanging out all the time. Well, to make a long story short, uh, we were hanging out one night at this. Uh, I guess after going to a couple clubs, we hung out at this uh, restaurant. He met this chick. She was cool. She had a sister. We both hit it off. You know, we were having a great time. Uh, I ended up getting the sister's number, and I, I told her, hey, well, let's do a double thing, you know, just so I can help him out so he can hook up and then, you know, hook up and then DTB. Well, he ended up hooking up, and it, I'm not even kidding you. It, within a, I know, I know. Da -da 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 -da. Within a week, uh, they ended up hooking up, going out, and all of a sudden saying that they're going to get married. I am not lying to you. This is a true story. A week? In a week. Okay. Is, is, that's, I mean, to me, that was unbelievable. I was like, okay, whatever. Well, it's been six months, I think, and uh, their wedding is coming up on the 27th. Now... I don't talk to the sister anymore. He's still talking to that girl, and obviously, and they're going to get married now. He doesn't call me or, you know, we don't hang out at all. I'm, you know, I'm not all hurt, but I'm definitely not going to this wedding. I understand. Thank you so much for the call. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.